Good evening and thank you for joining us. A fire broke out in an East End apartment complex early this morning, leading to an effort lasting hours to douse the flames. It happened on McLaughlin Street and thankfully there were no injuries reported. The building, which a nearby resident said was recently purchased with a plan to renovate, appears to be a total loss. The roof had collapsed and there was significant water damage throughout as a result of the effort to fight the fire. A total of seven pumpers, an aerial ladder, and a command vehicle responded to the incident. Thunder Bay Fire Prevention is currently investigating the cause of the blaze. Local union workers, families, and community members gathered at Current River Park today to acknowledge the contributions unions have made for its workers. The annual Labor Day picnic highlights the achievements and challenges of the last year. Jessica Clement has a story. Thunder Bay's Labor Day picnic is an annual tradition that brings union workers and the community together and gives them the opportunity to celebrate achievements that have been made over the past year. Hundreds came out to show their support and celebrated with food, bouncy castles, and pony rides. Picnic goers are also able to enjoy a live performance by local musician Rodney Brown. We shall not be, we shall not be moved. We shall not be, we shall not be moved. Thunder Bay and District Labor Council President Carlos Santander Maturana says along with celebrating accomplishments, the picnic is also a time for labor workers to reflect on this year's challenges, adding that this year's picnic focuses on post-pandemic economic recovery. In the last number of months, we have seen many unions who are going on a strike train to get a fair deal because of the huge inflation that is affecting our members. And that is an issue that we need to talk we need to share information, we need to share strategies in order to face off on a very unfriendly provincial government. The Labor Day picnic sees hundreds of people each year, and Santander Maturana says it's invigorating seeing all the community support. For me, as a president and for the member of the council and the delegate, this is quite invigorating. Uh, many people who are attending the picnic are not even union members, but they are part of the working poor. And they are coming here to enjoy the last wines of the summer. They are coming here in order to enjoy the activities that we are paying for for the kids. And it's all about developing a sense of community. Jessica Clement, TVT News. Ontario's Housing Minister Steve Clark has stepped down from Cabinet. It comes just days after Clark rejected opposition calls for him to resign amidst a report that found he violated the Integrity Act in the government's controversial Greenbelt land swap. The Integrity Commission found Clark failed to oversee the land selection process, resulting in certain developers' interests being furthered improperly. Clark announced his resignation this morning in a letter, saying, quote, I realize my presence will only cause, cause further distraction from the important work that needs to be done, and that I need to take accountability for what has transpired. Last week, local progressive conservative MPP Kevin Holland said he supported Premier Ford's decision to not remove Clark from Cabinet. The Choose Life Gala was held last week at the Norwester Hotel in support of mental health for youth in Nishinaabe Aski Nation communities. One of these special guests was Mike Downey, the brother of Canadian music icon Gord Downey, who worked with his late brother on the Secret Path Initiative for Indigenous Youth. Joe Sadowski has a story. I mean, Gord created help create 14 tragically hip records, seven solo records in his career. Nothing meant more to him than Secret Path. The last album ever put out by Canadian legend Gord Downey was a solo album called The Secret Path, about a story of a young Anishinaabe boy, Cheney Wenjack, who fled from a residential school in Kenora in 1966 and tried to walk back to his father at the Martin Falls Reserve over 400 miles away. One week later, Cheney's body was found with nothing but a glass jar in his pocket with seven matches inside. Telling the story of Cheney Wanjack was telling the story of residential schools. So the telling the story of one boy was telling the story of 150,000 children. After the album and documentary's release in his final year before he died, Gord Downey was adamant about calling to build a better Canada to bring more awareness, understanding, and to create a path toward reconciliation between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people.
Gord's brother, Mike Downey, was in attendance for the Choose Life Gala, which supports mental and emotional support for First Nation youth that are suffering from mental health issues to help prevent suicides. Deputy Grand Chief of Nishwabayaska Nation, Bobby Narcisse, says there's still work to be done to support First Nation students that have to leave their communities to go to schools in cities like Thunder Bay. Uh, really educating everybody in terms of uh, uh, what happened during residential schools, but also what could we do uh, forward? How could we, uh, how could we ensure that this never really happens again? And uh, to ensure that uh, you know there are programs, there are supports uh, for youth, uh, children, youth, and families who have to leave their First Nation communities to attend school. Joe Sadowski, TBT News. Students from Fort William First Nation will be looking sharp as they head back to class this week. The kids recently headed to the New Wave School of Hair Design for a free back-to-school haircut. Lee Noonan has a story. A couple dozen youth from Fort William First Nation took advantage of this year's free haircut day at the New Wave School of Hair Design. The event is open to students from kindergarten through grade 12, and the school's co-owner, Cosmo Manella, says he loves having the kids in the salon. Oh, they love it. They just, the, they enjoy it, you know, because uh, they want the, the new experience to get the haircuts there. Makes me feel great, and uh, it, it, um, they're, they're so happy, too. Manella says the event is also a chance for the new wave students to hone their skills. Oh, it feels great to give back to the community. I love having the kids come in. feels good to see them leave and uh, get ready to know they're going to be fresh for school. Whether they're getting a whole new do or just a trim, the kids agreed that it'll be good to start out the school year looking and feeling their best. How important do you think it is to have a nice fresh cut of hair for the first day of school? Not too important, but it's good to look good. I feel like confidence is really important, especially in high school, because high school's hard and... It's nice to look good. It's going to be nice for me to have a, a new haircut at school. Manella started running back to school haircut days back in 2018 and says he's not planning to stop anytime soon. Lee Noonan, TBT News. Thunder Bay City Council will receive a report on September 11th regarding a controversial plan to eliminate 31 of the 39 outdoor boarded rinks around the city. Such a move would save around $365,000 annually. But the user group which would be most affected, youth hockey players, are expressing outrage at the idea. Jonathan Wilson reports. I think it's ridiculous. It helps people get out in the community and it's just an awesome time. These minor hockey players offered some strong opinions at this summer hockey practice at Fort William First Nation Arena. Although kids this age don't usually pay attention to the local news, they've all heard about the city proposal to eliminate 80% of the city's outdoor rinks, which the kids refer to as the ODRs. I think it's kind of dumb, my opinion. I, uh, I use the outdoor rinks quite a bit with my friends, just don't have anything to do in the winter. So what was your reaction when you heard that news? Wasn't very happy because it takes up a lot of time in my winter, so I have a lot of empty time on my hands now. I don't think it's a very bright idea. Honestly, I think most of the rinks in town are being used a lot, they're packed lots of the time. I think that they're occupied. I don't think there's a good reason to shut them down. I just, I think they should keep it. I don't really like it like that. I just think keep them open and stuff, yeah. These players have indoor practices and games all winter, but say they still flock to the outdoor rinks at least a few times a week to hone their skills and have fun playing pickup hockey with their friends. And they're firmly opposed to the idea of losing 31 of the 39 ODRs around the city. Terrible idea. You close down a bunch, it'll be like 30 people at a time. Like, oh, I think it's a joke. Absolute joke. It is not a good idea. All these kids want to enjoy their, their, their winter break on the outdoor rinks and have fun. I don't think it's a good idea. What's your reaction when you heard that? It's like, oh, wow. Like, why? Ruin all these kids' fun in the, in the winter. Emma, what was your reaction when you heard the city wants to shut down 30, 31 outdoor rinks? Not good. Why? Because I love hockey and I just want to go to the outdoor rinks and play. There's also been a lot of opposition posted on social media regarding the potential closure of most of the boarded rinks. The move would save the city over $350,000 per year if it's approved as is. The city launched a public survey on the issue, which closed on August 27th. 
Council will be presented with a report outlining the results at their next meeting on September 11th. Jonathan Wilson, TBT News. And finally, Heimer's Fall Fair wrapped up today. The two-day event has been celebrating the area's agricultural roots for 111 years, and organizers expected upwards of a few thousand people to walk the fairgrounds this year. We asked some of the attendees what they love most about the country fair. I like the vendors because I like seeing what they sell, and, you know, they have stuff from different cultures, so I get to learn about different cultures and everything. And all in all, it's just very good. It's got good vendors, good music, and uh, a chance for people to kind of show off some of their arts and crafts and, and uh, uh, animals and food that they grow up here. The country feel, it's all local people to Thunder Bay or the rural area who are putting this together. I mean, how many volunteers are here? I just like the fair, I like the atmosphere, uh, the vendors, uh, the horse shows, the cow shows, petting the pigs. and. Really, you know, it's when I first learned how big a pig really gets. And everybody thinks they're little tiny things, but uh, they're not. You know, there's the music, food. Like I said, they, you know, you meet so many people out here, you know. Just a fantastic annual event. We're now joined by sports anchor Mike Lang. Mike, we're not far off the SIJHL season. But for fans that are maybe itching to see some walleye action, they had the Teleco Cup yesterday. Well, the entire weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, plenty of action at Norwest Arena. But first, uh, something kind of funny happened. I think you stole my jacket again. Am I wearing your jacket I right now? I think you're wearing my jacket again. It fits like a glove. Yeah, well, that's why I'm wearing your jacket. <laughs> are because, you wearing my Yeah, because remember a couple of months ago, you accidentally stole my jacket, right? Well, I no, think... No, I think this is... I've been wearing this on television all the time. I think that's my jacket. Anyway, we'll clear it up after <laughs> we'll the break. We'll figure that out after the we'll break. We'll have uh, sports, of course, the walleye, <laughs> and more coming right up.